Well, hey, guys, welcome back to the Black Doctors Talk podcast. I am Dr. Christopher Holmes, host for this episode and member of the Black Doctoral Network. So today I am not here to disappoint you. I never do. I am back with another amazing guest. This time I am here with Dr. Brian Gant. Now, listen, this young man has done a lot of things that I think you guys are really going to want to hear about. So who is Dr. Gant? Well, Dr. Gant has over 17 years in law enforcement with the FBI addressing cyber, domestic terrorism, and public corruption. Uh, He joined the ranks of the U.S. Secret Service as a special agent working on domestic and international assignments, including the the protection of former President Barack Obama and Bill Clinton. That's not it. Now he's come full circle in his life, and he is actually um, an assistant professor uh, working in leading cybersecurity at Maryville University. So in order to listen to this interview, guys, you're really going to need some clearance. So go ahead, buckle up, uh, do the paperwork, make sure that you can watch this because there's going to be some high level stuff going on during this particular interview. I want to thank you, thank you, thank you. And I want you guys to welcome Dr. Gant. Hello, everyone. Thanks for having me, Dr. Holmes. Well, listen, I already told you I'm excited about talking with you. I want to hear this whole journey that you've been on thus far, uh, and then we'll get into what's going to be happening happening next for you. So let's start in the very beginning. Tell us about young Brian. Who was this young man? Uh, young Brian. Wow. Seems so long ago, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, young Brian, say, uh, born and raised in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, grew up uh, in the North County area of uh, St. Louis, and I actually... I uh, went to school at Maryville, where I'm currently working at, uh, which is uh, in the western part of St. Louis as well. Uh, majored in computer information systems while I was in college. Uh, avid basketball player, uh, loved sports, uh, but I always had an affinity uh, for computers as well. Um, so that kind of took me into the uh, the cyber path, which which I'm on now. Um, I was blessed enough to uh, graduate. Uh, in 2003 from Maryville University uh, with that with that information systems career career. Uh, and um, that kind of led me into to federal law enforcement. Um, I had no aspirations of getting into law enforcement at all while I was in college or high school. Never even thought about criminal justice. Uh, but uh, computers, as uh, I think you'll find out uh, during this talk today, uh, they kind of they can lead you in so many different avenues, you know, in, ter- in terms of careers. So very, very lucky. So when you say it led you, mm-hmm. like, oh, spirit led or like something happened and just like, boom. Uh, actually, uh, it might be a combination of both, ironically. Um, we have a, a newspaper, one of the oldest African-American newspapers in the country here in St. Louis called St. Louis American. Mm-hmm. And I actually was doing a, doing a co-op uh, at a company and uh, my co-worker actually handed me the paper and he said, Hey, you need to, you might want to look at this. And it was a big ad saying uh, the FBI was hiring for intelligence analysts at the time, um, right after, you know, not so long after 9 11 had occurred. And they wanted to beef up the intelligence uh, cadre at the, uh, at the federal level. And he said, man, you should, you should apply. And I said, you know what? I am going to apply. Uh, I was doing an analyst type position. Um, so I said, you know, you know, let's see what happens. And, um, before I knew it, I was uh, at Quantico, Virginia, uh, going through uh, training, uh, analyst training, not agent training, but um, uh, passed the background check, did the whole uh, polygraph lie detector. Um, and uh, I was a, a federal employee uh, 2004, uh, working uh, intelligence, uh, cybercrime, uh, some domestic terrorism and a little bit of uh, public corruption. Wow. Now, that sounds like some heavy information that's coming your way on a regular basis. Absolutely. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about how long did you do that? I was an analyst for about five years, I believe. Um, And typically when you get in those types of roles, you can either uh, seek to uh, become more of a senior analyst, or sometimes you have those who want to venture out a little bit more and get into the field. And uh, getting into the field was kind of the route I wanted to take. Um, Whenever we would go out on warrants or, or things of that nature, and we would have to wait until the, the agents or the police actually secured the scene. And then as an analyst, I would come in. Um, maybe I was doing evidence technician at the time or looking um, for things to help out with the case. But uh, I wanted to be the one who was actually going in and securing the scene. And uh, 
uh, if in action, if you will, right? And yeah. so I decided yeah. to uh, I decided to apply to become a special agent with a number of different agencies: DEA, ATF, FBI, of course, and uh, Secret Service. And uh, with with federal jobs, um, typically whoever has a class coming up first, that's who you, you you're gonna go with, right? There's yeah. ebbs and flows to when they offer those those classes. So um, the Secret Service was actually uh, the first one to come back with the class. And before I knew it, uh, seven months later, uh, through some rigorous training, um, I, I was a Secret Service agent. Wow. So when I, when this we when we talk about boots on the ground, y'all, this man said, listen, I want to be boots on the ground, I'm not trying to be stuck in the office analyzing evidence. I want to be on the scene. And then he says, I want to be an agent. And boom, it happens. Yeah, yeah. God, God blesses you in many different ways. Wow. <laughs> Be careful what you ask for, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I uh and again, um, at this point in time, you know, five years before that, like I said, I had no aspirations of uh law enforcement whatsoever. But yeah, um, you kind of go um where you where you led. And uh before I knew it, um I was a Secret Service agent um, doing protection probably 20 percent of the time um, and then doing investigations, um, counterfeit money, um, wire fraud, bank fraud, uh, electronic crime investigations, things of that nature, which a lot of people don't know. The Secret Service actually does the majority of the time. 20 protection is, is a very small percentage of the actual day to day functions. Wow. So I have to ask you, because, you, you, again, you're getting a lot of information. You're seeing a lot of things that most of us uh, as lay people would never hear of, never experience, never quite understand. With that level or the weight of that, um, how did that whole experience impact you? Um, it taught me uh, actually to um, uh, be very calm um, in terms of, um, you know, when chaos may be going on around you. Um, you have to keep up, keep your head. And, uh, and I tell my son this all the time. I have a 17 year old son. And I said, those who can keep their head when when chaos is going on around them um, usually uh, are the ones who um, tend to be uh, uh, successful and not getting too high, but not getting too low. Yeah. Um, so, you know, as you mentioned, um, um, we had a top secret uh, SCI clearance, security clearance um, was, was able to. Uh, uh, read a lot of uh, information coming from CIA, NSA, other intelligence agencies of stuff going on around the world. Yeah. Uh, so you have to, you know, keep that internal, right? And uh, um, but what, uh, but also, uh, you know, uh, uh, be on your p's and q's in terms of your every everyday job, uh, yeah. being very very attentive. Um, so, and I think that has kind of carried on to me uh, in my current role and even my personal life. You know, when I go to restaurants. I never have my back at the door, right? I'm always uh, wanting to know where the exit is, um, looking for an egress point. Um, so uh, some people may say that <laughs> that makes me a little paranoid, but uh, I like to think of it as being more security conscious, yeah. which is uh, what I try to try to promote to promote to my students. I think one of the things when I hear about your particular work, uh, number one, I would probably be like you, like my antennas would be constantly up. Mm -hmm. um, just to be aware of my surroundings. But number two, I, I wonder how that would impact my view about the goodness that's in the world. Yeah, yeah, uh, I have uh, often gotten that remark as well. Um, um, sometimes it's good to be a little naive, yeah, right? Um, because there's so much going on in this world um, and, and uh, the vast majority of it um, you don't hear about it because media, you know, hasn't hasn't uh, gotten a hold of it. Um, but, um, you know, um, uh, I, had, I had good leadership um, during that time um, to keep me in a good mind frame, keep me in a positive mind frame. And, and even if we were only able to impact um, a small percentage of those, it, it, it was still better than it was, you know, before. Right. Yeah. So um, whether it was. Um, any kind of the investigations I did and helping out victims, or whether it was a successful uh, protection of the president, vice president, or any former presidents, or even going to the UN every September and, and guarding a president of another nation. You know, if we successfully 
you know, protected them for the week or two weeks that they were in our country, then um, um, that was a that was a notch uh, in the positive uh, bank for us. So and I took pride in that. Let's talk a little bit about the sacrifice it takes to be in these types of positions uh, from family. You talked about your children. Um, talk a little bit about that. Oh, uh, sacrifices is definitely a, a big portion uh, of the job. Um, at the time, kids were a little smaller. I also have a daughter who's 10 right now. Uh, but uh, you're doing a lot of logistics from the road, right? Uh, yeah. Especially when election years, election years, you might be on the road 70, 75 percent of the time. Wow. So you are um, you're missing some family reunions, right? Some practices yeah. you're having to uh, uh, plan out, you know, uh, daily activities, you know, for for your uh, your kids. And your significant other, um, you know, uh, while you're away, and so uh, you have to, uh, uh, also, you have to relay, you know, the, that you're thankful um, for the position that you have, but you also have to make sure that um, home is being taken care of, yeah. you know, for sure. So yeah. um, I try to do do that throughout that time period, and um, um, I think um, my kids understood uh, kind of what was going on. And then um, they were thankful when, for when I came back. Yeah, I bet. Daddy's home. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> um, so through all of this, at some point you decide, you know, I've been through a lot of craziness in my life and I just want to go through some more craziness. I want to get a doctorate. Yeah, yeah. what was I thinking, right? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what that was about, right? Just add on more. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so what was your thought process when you considered it and then, actively start right. pursuing it? Well, you know, I had always, uh, uh, aside from being an Asian, I had always uh, taught adjunct um, instructed at different universities, whether in, in, in an online capacity because um, of convenience. Uh, but I always had an affinity for uh, instructing or teaching, giving back in some form or fashion. And so I always looked at it as like my, like my retirement plan. Like when I get done, I want to be, be, become a professor, um, you know, talk about my experiences and whatever subject. Uh, I had no idea um, that it would come a lot sooner um, uh, than I expected. Um, so I kind of merged the two um, of uh, uh, security, physical security and cybersecurity and some of the investigations that, that I conducted and um, um, enrolled in my alma mater in, uh, into the uh, doctoral program, which is a phenomenal program. You actually uh, complete your uh, dissertation along with your coursework simultaneously. So um, very structured, but also very rigorous to get it completed in a certain amount of time. Um, but it um, it allowed me the opportunity to uh, pursue a, a full time tenure track position. Wow. Which I otherwise would not have been able to do. Um, and, and, and as you said, add on to the, the, the craziness of uh, trying to complete a complete a dissertation. So. Um, that's what kind of led me to it. And um, um, I have no regrets right now. So talk a little bit about your research. Um, uh, what did you conduct the research on? What was the topic and how are you continuing um, being engaged with your research still? So my actual uh, dissertation was on uh, cyberbullying in esports. Oh, and it looked at uh, student and uh, administrator perceptions of it. And so. Um, Maryville University uh, has a huge esports presence. Um, we like to call it the Alabama football of a <laughs> uh, national championships, the whole thing. And so um, uh, I was able to actually look at um, whether or not um, that gray area between strategy and whether or not it moves over to bullying and actual cyber bullying, right? And uh, it, it, it's amazing, uh, amazing topic. Um, um, just getting a perspective of uh, kids who are, are in this realm. They're winning, you know, million dollar prizes at some of these different events. Um, uh, Maryville recruits uh, individuals from across the world, you know, to play esports. So there's an international aspect to it as well. You may have uh, international students and their strategy and whether it toes the line between cyberbullying and American students be completely different, right? And then there's the aspect of um, whether um, uh, females are also getting involved at a, at a, at a, a larger rate, uh, still not where it probably needs to be. But um, so then there's there's that function of it as well. 
um, and how um, um, it came on the scene so fast and quick that a lot of athletic departments really didn't have the infrastructure to properly support it, mm -hmm. right? It was kind of like uh, if you got caught for cyberbullying, you kind of fell under student conduct at, yeah. from the university as a whole, and that was it, right? Um, any other kind of um, um, support or, or discipline or, or anything else um, uh, really wasn't spelled out, you know, policy-wise. So very, very interesting topic. Um, I've even morphed it into um, um, uh, diversity perceptions as well, looking at um, um, the influence of uh, minority groups in, in the uh, esports uh, space as well. So um, uh, it's so many different avenues I can I can go with it, but uh, I enjoy I enjoy doing that, conducting the research. So I know that now that you are completed and you are now Dr. Gant, um, who has been one of the biggest inspirations for you to finish a degree? I uh, definitely would say uh, my parents. Um, I come from a long line of uh, educators, um, K through 12 primarily. Uh, my mom was a, a public school teacher in the city of St. Louis for 30 plus years. Aunts, school teachers, city of St. Louis, 30 plus years. Um, and so um, I've always kind of had that uh, academics first uh, kind of mindset. Um, and so uh, we actually, actually, when I graduated, um, we were kind of on the tail end of dealing with some of the pandemic, but we still didn't have an in-person per se graduation. But one of the uh, the highlights uh, of my life, I will say, is we actually had to conduct it virtually. Uh, but I was able to have my uh, my mom actually uh, hood me. Um, uh, we we're at my sister's house, and so um, that was a very very special moment moment for me. And uh, her seeing me matriculate from undergrad uh, to gaining a master's and then, and then uh, gaining my doctorate degree is something uh, I'll, I'll never forget. Wow, that's amazing. Um, you know, I too didn't have um, a physical graduation. Um, mm -hmm. And it's different, but it, it doesn't decrease the level of pride that you feel in the work that you did and the commitment uh, that you made to yourself uh, to actually finish the degree. Absolutely. Um, so if you've got other people out there um, who may feel like obtaining this degree is just too much, what advice would you give them? Uh, I would tell them to take a step back, um, uh, create a plan and uh, realize that it is achievable and you can do it. Um, everybody has different things going on in life um, um, that they may uh, see as a hurdle um, to, to completion. Yeah. If you really look at it um, from a macro level perspective and you really break it down and, and you uh, you implement time um, for you to conduct research and you implement time for you to um, work on your dissertation and coursework and you also implement time, me time, you know, um, whether that be socially or whatever you use to kind of uh, de-stress. Um, you would be surprised at the game plan and and how how quickly that time will go. Um, and before you know it, you will be you will be a doctor, right? Um, that's not to say the journey isn't isn't uh, difficult, but you know anything in life worth getting is going to be difficult, right? And yeah. uh, if you have a goal in mind, um, take a step just take a step back, um, organize it, and uh, and achieve it. So you, you, you said something, you said to uh, take time to de-stress. Mm -hmm. So considering your career um, and what you're currently doing, I want to know, what do you do to de-stress? What is, what is your hobby? What is your uh -huh. activity that just kind of gets you away from it all? Well, since I'm old now, it can be. Ah, so get out of here. <laughs> which is the used to be. Uh, I, I play basketball a lot. So playing in different basketball leagues uh, used to be my go to. But uh, now trying to trying to get into golf a little bit more. OK, um, I'm a movie goer. I'm a, I'm a Marvel guy. Um, I love going to the movies. Um, I love uh, critiquing movies as if, as if I'm Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> um, I, I enjoy that. Um, but I also love spending time with with my kids, family. 
Um, my son is uh, actually is going to be attending Northwestern University on a football scholarship next year and uh, just going to his games, that whole recruiting journey. Yeah. My daughter was a part of that as well. Um, I uh, I tried to take take full advantage of it. And uh, we we pretty much toured the country going to visit schools last year. And I really, really enjoyed that. Uh, enjoy that family time with them. The, that actually kind of de-stresses me. And uh, it also um, pushes me to know why I'm doing what I'm doing, yeah. you know, at the end of the day. Yeah. And so that kind of, that kind of, that kind of fills me back up. I appreciate that. Yeah. Con- continuing to, to have that purpose in life professionally, right. but also that familial aspect of it makes a difference and that balance is important. And so that- what's next for you? I mean, in the next five to 10 years, what, what do you want to be doing? I want to continue, obviously, uh, with my research, because um, I think some different avenues. I, w- I would love to get more in depth into um, um, women and technology and, and women in esports and and uh, the effect that has uh, on institutions. Um, I also um, I want to get more into the progr- programmatic things at the institutional level um, in terms of uh, strategy um, with with technology and uh, cybersecurity. Um, you know, ways that we can um, develop a curriculum um, that is advantageous uh, in terms of like access and opportunity. I'm very, very huge into access. I feel those who have the opportunity can do just as well um, with with those who are necess- wasn't necessarily born into, um, you know, that, that, that kind of uh, uh, access. Um, so hopefully whether that's uh, uh, assistant dean level or, or or what have you? Um, I really do um, want to continue to have an impact on uh, on the community as a whole um, and and the industry. And uh, it's it's a good feeling when you go to graduation and you uh, you get to see some of those students cross uh, walk across that stage that stage uh, who otherwise um, four or five years prior um, thought they couldn't. You know that that was a, a dream and it wouldn't be a reality. So. Anyways, anyways, I can impact strategy on a continue with that. Uh, I'm all for it. And I really love the fact that you have so many years of um, field experience and now merging that with academia makes a difference because you're able to make real life connections to what uh, students are reading about. And, mm-hmm. and to share your stories. Granted, you probably can't share every story, but just <laughs> right. sharing some experiences, there, there is a level of connectivity that intrigues students, number one, but deepens their level of understanding about what you're offering inside of that classroom. Yes, absolutely. Um, I'm all for it. Uh, I try to bring in as, as many guest presenters mm. uh, to my classrooms as possible because uh, they want to hear from people who are actually doing the work, right? And they want to ask that question, you know, what did you do today? Um, I'm not that far removed uh, um, from uh, the nine to five, but anytime you can bring in somebody like that, uh, to give them that uh, that that real life uh, firsthand knowledge, it's uh, it's very impactful. So I I plan to continue to do that um, um, as my approach as uh, as I, I continue my academic work. Awesome. Now I do have to ask you, how long have you been a member of BDN? I would say going on two years. Two years now. Mm-hmm. And tell us, tell me a little bit about that experience. What do you, what, what have you enjoyed so far about being connected uh, with this particular organization? Uh, I think the organization is awesome, right? It uh, it connects people of uh, of like mind and experience. Um, you know, I was able to actually uh, present uh, at a, at a particular conference on my on my research, and just some of the connections that I made um, was was just amazing. You know, um, you're able to bounce ideas and and uh, different philosophies. Off of, off of those who, uh, um, like I said, are like-minded. Um, so just the the, the uh, camaraderie is something that uh, I think sticks sticks out for me, um, as well as the different platforms. You know, this podcast, uh, the conferences, some of the webinars. Um, in my opinion, it's one of the more active um, organizations in terms of getting information out and trying to highlight those across the country and uh, what they're doing, um, which I think is key, right? Um, um, I, I believe in access and opportunity for students, but I also believe uh, those who are at this level should be afforded some access and 
uh, the, some highlights as well. So yeah. I, I think it's awesome what you're doing. Yeah. Well, you know, we really try to find individuals just like yourself uh, who bring a lot of experience and knowledge to the table. And so you're the, the exact type of person that we love to have in this organization. So you talked about the conference. I'm sure the last one you presented at was virtually. Correct. So we have another one coming up very shortly in my backyard here in the ATL. Will you be joining us for our in-person conference? Absolutely. I can't wait. I'm a, I'm a former ATL resident. Uh, so uh, uh, Gwinnett County, Lawrenceville, my old stumping grounds, even though it's it's in the suburbs. <laughs> yes, yeah, close enough. It's, a, it's the metro area. I get it. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, but I will definitely be in attendance for sure. And so uh, what are you looking forward to it being your first in-person conference? Uh, just the networking, right? Um, uh, I love to talk to people and uh um, I love to be that fly on the wall, right? Yeah. And to listen to those different experiences and uh, and just what people um, are bringing to the table and uh, research and uh, interests, um, I think is uh, will be very, very beneficial. And I'm definitely looking forward to it. So I want you to look at the camera right now and tell people, if you're not registered for the conference yet, stop what you're doing and get it done now. If you are not registered for the Black Doctor Network Conference, stop what you're doing, open up your laptop and register right now. Be there. I'm going to be there. You need to be there. Listen, you just the guy with the, with the clearance just told you. So that didn't come <laughs> from me. So if he said it, you better do it. Do it now. We're waiting on you. We need to see you in the place at the conference this year, Atlanta, Georgia, BDN, be in the place. Uh, great thing is going to happen. Networking is going to happen. Uh, relationships will be built. Uh, feedback will be given. It is a safe space for Black academics to thrive and grow and develop. Uh, Dr. Gant, I want to thank you so much for joining me today uh, for this episode of the Black Doctors Talk podcast. Brother, listen, if nobody's ever told you, I'm impressed by you. I think you're amazing. And I'm excited about what the future holds for you. With a clearance like yours, I see president in your future. You talked about Dean. No, I mean president. Who can deny anybody with your level of experience a presidency? I'm claiming it. I appreciate your confidence, Dr. Holmes, for sure. <laughs> well, how can our viewers and listeners go and find out more about the work that you're currently doing? Uh, as always, you can uh, look me up on uh, LinkedIn. Um, I'm also on um, Twitter, uh, Dr. Professor Gant. Um, as far as uh, any articles or things of that nature that I'm putting out, uh, definitely give me a follow. Well, listen, while you guys are out there and you're going to follow Dr. Gant, please take some time and follow us as well. We would love to join and connect with you and be in a sharing experience. Uh, until, guys, uh, we meet again, this has been a wonderful episode of the Black Doctor Talk podcast. Dr. Gant, thank you again so much for taking time out of your busy day uh, to share with us. We really, really do appreciate you. Thank you. Well, guys, that's it. For now, make sure you tune in. Next time, I'll be back with another amazing guest. It is not my goal to disappoint you at all. So like I always say, be safe, be blessed, and we'll see you next time.